right guys welcome back to the channel today's video we are going to be adjusting the bov on the big turbo 1.8 t engine in the octavia rs project reason i'm doing it is because between the gear changes and at light throttles it's making the old choo -choo 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 noise for example and this is not the potentially this is not the greatest thing for the health of the turbo it, it's making that noise because it's the throttle pe pedal is closed and it's still and the turbo is still turning it's still trying to push it air into the engine even though the throttle pedal is closed so that air is then coming back down the intake track back towards the turbo and this is what's causing it to make these noises so you've got two things there the one is you've got air backing up in front of the turbo which is potentially slowing it down between gear changes and second of all when the air is coming back towards the turbo it's putting the shaft is like that it's putting stress on the turbo in that direction which is also not great the goal today is to see if we can minimize the amazing noises that the engine is making and to do that we're going to be uh, softening off the bov so it's not clamping so hard at idle so just to uh, clarify a few things about bovs if you're not aware when we're adjusting the bov we're not adjusting it for it to hold boost pressure we don't make it tighter so it holds more boost it doesn't work like that at least on this bov this is a granny bov on this car what, what keeps the bov closed what keeps the bov closed is boost pressure because we are running the vacuum line well vacuum vacuum when the engine is under vacuum but under boost there's boost coming through that vacuum line onto the top of the valve of the bov and that's what's keeping it closed You've got boost pressure underneath the bob. You've got boost pressure on top of the bob from the vacuum line. So there's no pressure differential across the bob. And that is why adjusting the, the springs, the tightness of the bob doesn't make any difference to the amount of boost it can hold. So what are we doing when we're adjusting the bob? We're adjusting how tightly it closes under idle under idle we've got vacuum on the top of the bov and then underneath the bov which is the pressure lines we have zero pressure because the end the, the turbo is not making boost so that pressure differential forces the bov to open which is what happens during gear changes but that's also what happens in idle if the spring isn't tight enough to keep the valve closed it's a compromise but basically what we want to do what we're trying to do is we adjust the bov at idle and we want it just just tight enough that the bov stays closed at idle that's all we're trying to do that's all the adjustment is for and if it's good at idle it'll be good everywhere else that's the theory so this is what it is at the moment you can hear what it sounds like the next step we're going to be going into the engine bay I'm going to be showing you how to make the adjustments on this Grady Bov it's a type s let's get into uh, spoiling the fan and getting rid of the amazing noises there are guys so here is uh, the adjustment we've got the uh, a lock nut here Hopefully you're picking this up. You've got a lock nut here and the adjuster is here. So what we're going to do is first of all unloosen this and now we're just going to soften this off until we hear something happen with the engine. Well I've adjusted it a ton there. A ton and I don't hear anything happening with the uh, Okay, we'll try that. And then just doing the back, just tightening 
the lock nut here nothing crazy so I made the adjustments and what can I tell you it doesn't appear to have made any difference at all let's bring it into a bit more boost Think it's doing exactly the same as it was before. Okay, we'll adjust it a little bit more and hopefully we don't break anything. That's less than ideal, having no difference. So this is the setup as we've just seen. This valve actually has an extra port here and this is to assist the valve to open if it's not opening under normal circumstances just with this port and the boost port from underneath. Um, but what this needs is... Um, an extra feed from the boost side uh, before the throttle body I could do that now but before I start making a hole in the intake pipe work I want to make sure that this is absolutely working properly maybe there's a hole in this maybe there's a um, a small hole in the gasket in it and this is why it's not getting a a full vacuum to open properly so what I'm gonna do now is gonna I'm gonna take this off and disconnect it from here, disconnect it from here, disconnect it from underneath, take it off the car, open these screws up and have a look at the diaphragm inside just to check that's in one piece. So we've got to got it off the car. It looks a bit grimy, so the first thing to do is gonna be for me to clean it a little bit. Nothing crazy. And this is what we need to get off now. Okay. On top of the spring we've got this plate which is what adjusts the tension on it up and down we've got these two springs which are both inside this ring here which just sit in there like so and then we have our diaphragm around the outside I'm just going around checking it and it looks fine so I'm just going to reassemble it with the um, with a big spring I'm not going to do them up very tight at all that seems quite a bit easier to push in now without that spring and I can even by putting a vacuum on this with my mouth actually lift it I'm just going to give it a bit of lubrication because I don't think silicon spray hurt anything ever now let's put this back on the car So this is it all buttoned back up. Just put it temporary for now, just in case we need to adjust it again later. I've got no issue putting an extra pipe onto this from a boost pipe below, but I don't have um, a, a fitting to tee into the um, hose at the moment. So I'm just gonna try this with a weaker spring and uh, see if that does the job. So what I've done to check what is going on here, I've checked, I've pulled off the vacuum hose and I can see that there's no vacuum when the engine is running at idle. So this hose goes back here and it comes back here and I've noticed a few things. One, we've got a broken pipe here which wasn't fully broken before but it is now. This goes to the secondary air circulation I think. But what's most worrying of all is we've got two broken hoses here. So the, one of these, I think this one, is connected to the vacuum so this would explain why the bob is not working it's not getting a vacuum signal to the top so let's find out where this m249 system is connecting to the inlet manifold run a hose directly to the bob and let's see if we can get this bob working properly all right so i've just got the engine up the temperature just driving around so far i don't see anything bad with it it seems to function like it did before the next thing to do is it's just gonna have to give it a quick blast down here and just to see if we can hear the uh, bov making any unusual noises <laughs> So what did I start with in this process? I started off with a 
broken vacuum system for the BOV and the BOV that was on its hardest setting two springs inside on the maximum hardness and at the end of the tuning process I've gone down to the one one spring the weakest out of the two on its weakest setting and that is still enough to hold boost any boost I want seems like so far and it's enough to recirculate the pressure so if I can just pack all that video back down into a nice neat summary before you start tuning the bob or adjusting your bob you have to make sure that all the hoses in the bob system the vacuum hoses are in a1 condition it's pointless ad making adjustments if the foundations are not good what we're going for is to run the softest possible springs and that's it guys that is the video hopefully you found it informative helps you if you want to uh, adjust a blow off valve on your car as always look after yourself please vote on the video subscribe to the channel and i'll see you again in next week's video